Welcome back. The Ask Maddie Show is back. How are you feeling? I'm doing great. I really enjoyed my holiday weekend. Stepped away from the computer, stepped away from the trudge for a little bit, feeling refreshed and excited to talk about crypto and answer your guys' questions today. Absolutely, Maddie. These last couple of shows, we've done some tier lists, we've done some portfolio reviews, but we are back with your questions today, team. But before we get into that, become a Crypto Charge member. We are from CryptoCharge.com. Our community, our Discord is over there. Click the link in the pinned comment below. Go check that out. Our shop link is below that. But team, finally, just subscribe to this channel. We're growing fast. We're being we're having communities thrown at us left and right. So we are here to answer questions regarding these cryptos. Maddie is going full force on today's show. Maddie, are you ready? Ready as I'll ever be. Jason Burt 8631 says, I haven't accumulated an XRP bag. I've been focusing on Casper. Do you think it is too late to DCA into XRP compared to other projects for greater ROI? That's a really good question. And, I, and you're thinking about it in the right context, right? Um, you're looking at it and you're like, hey, I know about XRP. The community's big. Um, you know, the fundamentals are there. Very, very clear proposition value with XRP. We know what Ripple's doing with XRP, right? There's really this very clear picture that's been painted over the last decade plus um, with XRP being live on exchange. Um, me personally, you know, I always look at, is this going to be a potential long-term hold in addition to a short-term hold? If the answer is yes, then you can kind of start to measure out those ROIs and go, okay, great, you know, long-term, if I buy an XRP, let's say 55, 50 cents or so, give or take, right? Even under 60 cents. Let's just you know use that as kind of like our, our top number that I consider as like kind of that last call, uh, unless you're doing swing trading, which is a completely different you know situation here. But we're talking strictly about accumulation. Um, personally, I think that it's not a bad idea to have XRP exposure now because I don't think that we'll see a 55 or a 60 cent XRP after this next cycle sets in. I think we'll probably set our next higher low at a dollar or more, right? So when you look at that long-term gain, right? It's excellent. You also have that tax. Uh, essentially a tax benefit when you have those long-term holds. So when you hold an asset for a year or more, you pay a lesser capital gains tax on that, right? So let's say we're looking at long-term target of XRP of, you know, $50, $100, you know, whatever, several hundred dollars, right? Um, those gains are going to be taxed at a much lesser rate than your short-term gains. Now, Short term, I do believe that some of the other altcoins I have are actually going to provide sh better ROI this cycle around. But I don't want to, you know, eliminate some exposure just because it's going to provide just a, you know, a slightly lesser ROI. Again, a lot of my uh, ideology comes down to the opportunity of rotation. So if XRP goes first, even let's say it's, it does a 10x, right? It does a 10x very quickly, and I have some of my other positions that are still behind. Maybe they popped a little bit, but they're still kind of in their accumulative base. I'm going to take that short term XRP bag and pop that back into my laggard. So I definitely think under 60 cents XRP is a great time to long-term accumulate. Once we kind of get over that mark, I'm not so much interested in an XRP accumulating right now. I'm going to place my focus on some of the other assets, again, have not gone yet. Okay, just to clarify here, Maddie, for the beginners, for the people that are looking to get into XRP, you say under 60 cent cost basis. So like XRP is at 59 cents right now. If they were to DCA in on XRP right now at 59 cents, would those people be looking? Because your strategy is take 25% and hold that for the long term, sell the rest. Is that for a new beginner, someone that's going to buy XRP right now, would that be the strategy for them? I believe so. And again, this also comes down to my conviction in the long-term fundamentals of XRP. I think it's going to be a very widely used chain. I think it's going to be a very uh, high demand asset. Um, so I definitely see the long-term picture for XRP. So I would recommend considering, especially when you build a good cost basis like this, right? Let's say sub 60 cents to consider holding some of that long-term. Now it doesn't have to be 25%. Maybe for you, it's a smaller amount. Maybe it's 5%, maybe it's 10%, maybe it's more, maybe it's 30 or 35%. But Make sure that you're also remembering what's happened in previous cycles, right? Where we get this very, very big depreciation, even though we set a higher low, right? Meaning that over long periods of time where, you know, the, the overall value in that floor continues to go up, the volatility within tech and crypto is very, very intense. So we're hedging against ourselves in the event that we're wrong, right? And that price goes higher than our actual targets, right? And to which we have the opportunity to sell another portion of that bag at a higher price. But we're also, you know, giving ourselves the opportunity to have a lesser tax reward in the future and a bigger reward, right? So we want to hedge against both. Crypto is constantly evolving, tech's all constantly evolving, right? Um, we don't want to be just locked into one asset or one consensus model or, you know, one vertical and be like, this is the end all be all, right? Because I think there's going to be a lot more opportunities in the future. And I want to continue to build more and more dry powder each and every cycle. So I have opportunities to just capitalize on those. Natty513 says, what does diversified portfolio really mean in terms of crypto? 
Uh, Gavin and I were actually kind of talking about this. I was maybe like a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. Like, you know, what, how many verticals are there really in crypto? How many categories are there? And, you know, people can get more or less granular, um, even with, within gaming or within, you know, certain sectors, you can have subsectors within there. And somebody might say, well, if you're not diversified to all these subsectors, then you're not really diversified, right? Um, you know, and I think that a lot of people, when they think about, you know, a diversified portfolio, they don't have to do a lot of thinking because they're already, you know, they're in the Dow Jones and the S&P and the NASDAQ. And that already kind of does some of that quote unquote diversification for them, even though we're moving as a risk on asset. Um, I think that diversification can be kind of cut into two different slices. So one within verticals, right? So, you know, I have a relatively concentrated portfolio compared to a lot of other creators uh, and people who talk and review about cryptos, right? Um, some of them own 30, 40, 50 plus cryptos. That's fine. Everyone has a different strategy. Some people want to have that big blanket strategy. For me, I prefer to focus on no more than like 10 to 12, but my big bags are like, you know, five to six big bags. Um, so I focus on uh, a variety of sectors, right? So I'm looking at payment plays. I'm looking at or Oracles. I'm looking at privacy plays, right? Um, I'm looking at, you know, just some of the best L1s that offer smart contracts. Um, so I want to try to at least hit some of those bigger categories and try to at least get one good pick out of them. The other portion of diversity I was looking at, right, is like we talked about even in this last example, right? Is XRP even the best investment right now when there's potentially better ROI out there with other altcoins? I still want to have my head out of the clouds when I go, okay, you know, let's say my my smaller cap coin doesn't go as high as I, as I thought it was going to, right? I would still want to have some of the mid and larger caps like XRP working in my favor there where there's a lot of liquidity and a lot of volume being done. Um, so I can hedge against, again, the possibility of being wrong. When we look at all of these investments, very low likeliness that, you know, anything at least that I've picked because I've done a lot of research on it, it goes straight to zero, right? But sometimes our expectations cannot be met, right? Maybe we fall short, we only hit one of three targets, right? We only able to de-risk some of that. Um, so I want to be both diversified in verticals within the industry, as well as the overall, you know, market cap of that asset, right? I don't want to be strictly in micro caps. I don't want to be strictly in large caps. I want to kind of have a blend of that. And most of my portfolio does represent a good blend of both market cap size, as well as different verticals within the industry. So that's, to me personally, what that's what, what diversified means within crypto. Yeah, I brought that up to you like uh, I think it was mm, two weeks ago. It was on coinlore.com and Maddie, they basically like we went through this. We went through this whole sheet and it was like 60 different sectors. And if right. you're investing in crypto, you can invest in 60 different sectors. And if you look at the sector, some of them are meme coins. Some of them are for like, you know, cryptos that haven't really evolved into what they could potentially be like um, healthcare and education. But like right. some of the ones like, you know, they, they look at like XRP as like a payment sector, right? I think we can all agree that that falls within the payment sector. But XRP can also be with banking, you know, with with that whole. So but the whole question I wanted to ask you here, Matt, so get off on a tangent here is so there's a lot of sectors within crypto. What are maybe like three to four sectors that people need to look at before investing into a crypto? So I would say, you know, if you're going to pick an L1, a layer one, right, meaning it's not a scaling solution, it's not something that's built on top of another existing uh, protocol. Um, you know, I, I think that you want to try to have something that has native smart contracts, native NFTs, and very, very cost efficient. That's something I think is very important when you're looking at your L1. And that's going to be different for a lot of you guys, right? Maybe it's Casper, maybe it's HBAR, right? Maybe it ends up being Ethereum for you. Um, but again, I, I just make sure that, again, you're, you're looking at the opportunity with ROI in addition to the fundamentals of a protocol, right? So make sure your L1 has that at least all three of those things. I think those are really the keys to the long-term success of any L1. Um, within Oracles, there's really not a huge, huge competition for Oracles out there, but I think you should have exposure to at least one Oracle. Maybe it's Chainlink, maybe it's API3, but these are decentralized data feeds. They're crucial to executing smart contracts accurately, making sure that, you know, um, bridges and chains aren't exploited. Um, there's a variety of reasons why decentralized oracles are very important. Uh, I'm a personally a, a big believer in privacy. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a libertarian as, as a whole, right? I'm a very big believer in, in sovereign money and, and having control over your assets. And, and, and the lesser the government intervention, the better, right? Um, so I also have a Zcash position. Maybe that's Monero for you. Maybe that's Pirate Chain. Uh, but I think privacy is an important sector to consider. Um, and from there, I, I think that you can kind of start to look at maybe a couple other sectors that really interest you, right? I don't want anyone to ever think, oh, well, only focus on the things that Matt's interested in or this YouTuber is interested in. If you're if you're really interested in gaming, go for it, right? Do some research, see what coins are out there. Take one of those higher risk plays and look for a really good ROI, right? So I would say if you focus at least on those three that I talked about and then add two or three other verticals that you really pique your interest, you're probably going to have a very good cycle moving forward. MJ Tinkleberg says, what is your favorite AI project? So I never wanted like you know, front with you guys or pretend like I know things that I don't know, right? Um, and I, the things I do know, I'm, I'm have a strong conviction with, and I'll 
you know, I'll stand on my business. Um, when it comes to AI, right? <laughs> when it comes to AI, um, it's definitely still a very new sector and there is going to be a big inter uh, intersection of crypto and AI. And Casper has talked about that previously, the intersection of, of crypto and blockchain solutions, as well as AI solutions. And I think that there's going to be a very clear hand in glove fit with that. What those projects actually are moving forward, I don't know. I would say that my only quote unquote AI project that it's really interesting to me is Render, um, but that's really more about syndicating GPU power and being able to, you know, push it to different machines as needed, you know, whether you're doing 3D rendering or modeling or whatever it may be. Um, but personally, I'm not really heavily researched or, or invested into the AI sector right now. If we get a big crash and render, um, I'm definitely going to scoop some up and, and try to swing that the cycle. It's been a very volatile asset. I really love render. I'm kicking myself for not being able to buy it at the prices I want to, but I got to stick to my rules. Uh, but when it comes to AI, that's really kind of where my only focus is right now. But if you guys have an AI project that you think I should check out, Drop it in the comments. I'd be very curious to learn a little bit more about it. Cody Akala3423 says, hey, can you make a video on how to use a cold storage wallet and what one is recommended? So I already got that done for you guys. Uh, on our site, we've got all kinds of resources on how to use cold storage and we also have our Discord community. If you know, you're trying to set something up, you're trying to use a coin that's not you know natively available, we'll help you guys set up those you know third-party wallets to be able to connect to those. Um, so we have the resources already at CryptoCharge.com for you guys to be able to use cold storage. Uh, for me personally, I've been using Ledger Nano for about seven, seven-ish years now. Um, I have what my still my OG Nano that I've had for a long time. It still works as intended. Of course, they've gotten much better, much more user-friendly. Um, they look a lot better, um, but their product, can say from a quality standpoint, they've held up over the years. Um, you know, there's always the the issue that people have with the new recovery program, which you don't have to opt in for. And I would not recommend anyone opt in for. But, you know, at the end of the day, any cold storage device could technically have this capability. You just have to trust that they're not going to violate that trust. Um, when it comes to cold storage, you know, it, it's really not that hard to use. When you set it up, um, really the only difference between you set up like a hot wallet and a cold wallet is the seed phrases, right? So if you set up like a MetaMask wallet, which I'm sure like 99% of you guys have done, you've set up a MetaMask wallet, what do you get? You get a bunch of C phrases, right? You get a bunch of words, you gotta write them down, you should keep those offline. Um, and that's the only way to access your wallet again, right? So if I get a new computer or I'm setting it up on a new browser, they're gonna be like, hey, pop in your C phrases, right? And that's how I back up and restore my my access, right? So same thing with the cold storage device. The difference is you have this physical device is kind of like this middleman between um, your uh, wallet and you know being able to send it to other individuals. So you know, when you uh, keep your seed phrases offline, right, you have, first of all, that that security of not having to worry about getting screen scraped or, you know, a lot of you guys don't realize it. Like, you know, there's a lot of malicious software that they can log all of your keystrokes. Um, you know, a lot of you guys are not using VPN. So your internet connection is vulnerable a lot of the time. It's sad. It happens. I've actually heard a couple horror stories of people losing 50,000 plus dollars in, you know, MetaMask wallets by keeping it in a Google Doc. And they're like, it was in a Google Doc. I'm like, it is what it is, right? So keeping those cold storage, uh, those seed phrases offline is very important. Um, but when you have the cold storage device, right, you have to actually put your pin in um, and log in in order to actually send transactions and use the device to sign the transaction. So it kind of creates this like very high quality two-factor authentication. That's really what cold storage is. It's just this high quality two-factor authentication. The Ledger Nano S Plus is like 80 bucks right now. Probably the best investment you can make if you really care about Bluetooth, spend the extra money. But if you guys don't care about Bluetooth, you're doing most of your stuff on your PC, don't spend the extra money. Spend the 80 bucks, probably the best money you're going to spend outside of just your actual investments. To most people who have, I would say, even a couple thousand dollars or more in crypto, it's a non-negotiable. I think that you should have a cold storage device, especially if you plan on doing this long term, because you can hold thousands of different cryptos in there. There's nothing that's going to keep you from, you know, just adding to your portfolio. It's a very, very user-friendly software. I like the extra level of security. Um, and I've just seen so many terrible things happen with hot exchanges and hot wallets. I just don't want to be a victim and I'm not going to allow it to happen. Christina, I can't say your last name, 3306 says, can anyone tell me what they think about Flare? Christina has been begging to know about <laughs> Flare, Maddie. What insight can you give? Yeah, so Flare um, is, I could say, closely associated with the XRP community, um, one of those airdrop tokens, right? Um, and, you know, you guys know with me, a lot of times I get an airdrop and, and it's XRP related, you know, I'm selling it for XRP, <laughs> um, you know, and that's not like, hey, I don't think Songbird's going to do well, right? I don't think, you know, um, Solo is going to do well, right? It's fine. If, if you guys want to keep it being invested, you want to diversify within the XRP, um, you know, realm there. 
totally understand that. That's fine. For me personally, I'm like, it's free money. I'm just going to dump this back into the asset that I'm going to hold both short and long term. That's just like an auto thing for me, right? It's 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 literally free money. It's something I didn't pay for. Um, when it comes to Flare, I know they have smart contracts. I know they're using decentralized data feeds to feed those smart contracts, but I'm not quite educated on the entire Flare ecosystem and where they are within the roadmap now. I know there was a lot of frustrations um, a few years ago because Flare wasn't delivering on the roadmap. They kept pushing back airdrops. Um, you know, they did a variety of different things that frustrated people. I can't say if those things have been resolved or not. And again, I never want to give you guys information just to say, say, give an opinion or, or make a statement here um, when I'm not fully educated on it. So I'm not very educated on Flare. But one thing we can do is at least take a look at the technicals here on Flare and do a little bit of technical analysis. So let's go ahead and go to Flare USD. And one thing again, team, that I like to do is look to see if there's a crypto chart. So you'll see different exchanges here, Kraken, Bitfinex, Quaybase. Those are fine, but sometimes you won't have all the price history. So more often than not, the one that says crypto, which is just a fee that's provided by TradingView, that's the one I like to go for. So let's go ahead and zoom out here. We're on the daily chart. So let's go ahead and compress this data a little bit. Let's go to a three-day chart. And you know, it looks a lot like <laughs> some of the other assets that we were invested in early on, right? I cut my losses on Moon River. Um, you know, there's some assets like Blocktopia that look like this. The one thing that looks a little better than it did pretty previously is like you had, you know, this sideways action, then just this dub and you weren't really able to build a base in here. It looks like we're trying to build a little bit of a base here on flare, right? Trying to build an accumulative base. We've seen this behavior across a lot of altcoins now that we've seen total three, which represents the altcoin market minus Bitcoin and Ethereum, which is really, in my opinion, more accurate screenshot of where the actual altcoin market is at because Ethereum represents 17% of the entire crypto market right now. We want to eliminate that. So flare definitely has a balance that needs to be cleared out, even just from a technical standpoint, right? So up here around 27 cents, and then there's also another pocket up here right around 35 cents. So I would say that Flare probably at the minimum needs to clear out this pocket. That's about 150% to about a 200% move from current market price. So you could probably get a 2X out of this, just clearing that imbalance. We also have this um, uh, uh, wick over here in 2023, but Flare is definitely older than that. So let's go ahead and take a look at Coinbase. Let's see if there's any other charts um, that offer this, but it doesn't look like, it doesn't look we're getting any more data than that. We get January of 2023. This shows around 25 to 27 cents. And that was PPM there. Let's see, just make sure there's no other charts that could provide, potentially provide us a better data feed. Bitfinex shows the illiquidity wick in the opposite direction, um, but most charts do not show this. We see the illiquidity wick down sideways, new lows being set. So personally, you know, if you're looking to just you know, get out of flare or you wanna make a little profit and you have been lowering your cost basis and it's right around current market price, it's not a bad idea to load, unload maybe a little bit in that 27 to 30 cent range. That's what I'm even doing with a lot of my long-term holds is looking at where those distribution uh, phases are. And one of the examples that I actually posted on Twitter today uh, was with Casper, right? And same exact setup here. Um, you have this clear distribution range that formed from January or July all the way through April of 2022. You drop below. We said this long accumulation base, just like we did with Chainlink and a lot of other altcoins. You can see that that move just up into that next previous distribution range is about a 2.3x from current market price. So there's always opportunity out there. Again, that's just a technical setup. Um, again, I'm not very educated on what's happened most recently with the Flare network because again, I have my projects. I have my members' projects. They asked me to keep up on. Flare's not on that list for me or my or my members. Right right now. Um, so again, if you guys have something exciting about Flare, something that sets that Flare has that sets it apart from other cryptos, let me know. I'd love to dig a little bit more and potentially do a review for you guys. Stuart, a crypto charge loyalist says, Quant or Zcash, if you could only have one in your portfolio? So if I could only have one in my portfolio, I mean, I guess we're making the assumption I have other coins in my portfolio as well, um, to which I have XRP, um, to which I have HBAR. Um, you know, I, I think that kind of that cheap finance play is covered for me. Um, I'm gonna have to go with Zcash. And that's not just also because it's a different vertical. Zcash technically has a better upside, even from a Fibonacci standpoint, than QNT does. Zcash has also been cooking up for a really long time. If you look at the compression pattern, it actually looks a lot like the compression pattern XRP had from 2013 through 2017 before we got that 60x move practically, you know, in just a, a couple hundred days. Um, so personally, I, I would have Zcash. It's also a very um, underlooked vertical right now. A lot of people do not care about privacy. People will be talking about Zcash definitely when we're in the several hundred dollar range and they're going to be telling you, oh, now's the time to buy when you really probably could have bought the multi-year lows, which again, team, you can do right now. It's November 27. We're trading right around like 30 bucks right now, right? Um, I'm looking at, you know, anywhere from a few thousand dollars, right? As our as our top targets there, like 1,200 to $3,000 is kind of that top for Zcash um, if, if, if things do get cranking like they expect them to this coming cycle. So QNT, great run last cycle. Fundamentally, QNT, sound as hell. Can't say anything bad about QNT. Pound for pound though, Zcash probably has better ROI than QNT. 
I like that, Maddie. Is this the right question people should be asking themselves when? Because I'm guessing Stuart saying, "Should I add Quant or Zcash?" Is that the right approach you should be asking yourself when adding cryptos to your portfolio? Yeah, and kind of like what I stated towards the beginning of the question is, you know, do you already have exposure in this vertical, and how big is that exposure compared to your other allocations? So if you already have, you know, or let's say you have no uh, payment plays, you know, uh, exposure, right? You don't have any XRP or XLM or Algo or any of these, right? And you're like, okay, I want to add some QNT. Yeah, it's probably a good idea to add some QNT and have some exposure, especially if you're like, I'm very fundamentally educated on this project, and I see the, both the short term and the long term vision for it, right? But let's say you already have that payment play and you don't have a privacy play absolutely look to it. It's both a very good ROI uh, opportunity, as well as a very niche vertical that I think is going to have a lot of exposure over these coming years. You know, public blockchains are very great. You know, it's it's great that we have some um, accountability with that. But long term, right, do you guys really want every single one of your transactions exposed for the public to see, right? We can still trust um, and verify without exposing every pertinent detail to the public. And I do think that that's something valuable uh, that people are going to want in the future. So, you know, are Zcash, Monero, and Pirate Chain going to be the longest term winners over the next 50 years? Probably not, right? I think they were probably going to have another tech that comes in and makes these things more efficient. But I think over the next several cycles, we could definitely see some very exciting price action with things like Zcash. I like that, Maddie. Great comments on this team. If you like what Maddie had to say, leave a like. And if you have some, you know, Maybe some, uh, hey, Maddie, was that really? Leave them down in the comment Definitely. section down below. But, Maddie, big event coming up this Thursday for all Crypto Charged members. Can you divulge what you got going on this Thursday, November 30th at 5 p.m.? <laughs> Absolutely. So we're going to be doing a free webinar. You guys can sign up for this. Um, we're basically going to be doing a little bit of look at the macroeconomics of what's going on in the economy right now. Are we going into a recession? If so, what can we do portfolio-wise to, to prepare for that? Um, you know, what, what does that look like? historically when we've had soft or hard landings in a recessionary environment, right? Kind of getting you get educated on the different strategies you can use regardless of, you know, where we end up finding ourselves, um, you know, recession wise uh, in this coming year. Um, we're going to talk a bit about kind of the picture for for Bitcoin and how it impacts the markets for me looking at, you know, um, kind of why I'm so long term bullish on other, other altcoins like XRP and Casper. Um, and then, of course, we're going to give you guys a little bit of look at our platform, kind of what we do, and then answering some of your questions at the end of that uh, webinar. So if you guys want your questions answered, we're actually going to do that live. You don't have to wait for the next Ask Maddie show. Um, so go ahead and us, join us on that webinar. We're happy to answer questions about our platform, about anything we covered in the presentation, and just general crypto questions. So very excited for it. I hope you guys can join us. If not, we're going to try to at least get it re-uploaded. But if you want to ask a question live on that webinar is your opportunity. Yeah, I lied at the top episode. I'm going to put that as the first link. You can join up. It's just put in your name, in your email, and then you'll get a notification when that is going down. You're not going to want to miss that. A little bit different conversations than we have here, Maddie, because you and Dan are going to be tackling the macro. What's going on in the United States economy, which are big topics. And if you're young... This stuff matters for you. This is the future of you in the United States. And so this should be things that you should be really invested in and want to know about it. Because this will, I'll tell you this, this has set me, talking to Maddie and Dan, this has set me way far ahead when talking to my friends. Because they have no clue. And then I talk to these guys and they, they know what's <laughs> going on. So you're not going to want to miss that. It's in the pinned link down below. Click that link and just sign up for that. And we hope to see you there. I'll pull up your comments for you. So make sure you have your questions ready. You know, big macro topics. Wherever you're hearing outside, bring them here. Maddie and Dan, I'm telling you, the data bros, they show up. You're not going <laughs> to miss this. But until next time, Maddie, that's all we have. Till next week, team. See ya.